So anyway, Sapa Maya Sokoto. Kim, do you want to hit one of the lights for us, please? That's the one. Sokotoa. The, uh, I mean, this is stuff you learned last year, so it's going to sound like a repeat, but I'm just going to assume that everyone in here is going to need to learn this lesson almost like the first time. So anyway, these are uh, letters. It's an acronym. They all stand for words. So cut to a, and this is what it really means right here. But rather than trying to memorize this mess, it's for most students easier to memorize Sokotoa. The S stands for sign. The, the O is opposite over hypotenuse. C stands for cosine. And the A is for adjacent, the H is for hypotenuse. Oh, I made a big mistake in first period. We were talking about hypotenuse, and I said, hey, there's a funny key and peel about hypotenuse. Has anybody seen that? The key and peel video? I saw it a long time ago, and thinking, hey, this will be funny. There's a lot of bad words in there. I totally forgot about that. It was a little awkward. Anyway, the tangent. The tangent stands, or the T stands for tangent, the O is opposite, A is adjacent. And again, hopefully you understand this, but I'm going to explain it anyway. Why did I call this the opposite side right here? It's opposite of that angle theta. If I erase theta and put it up here, like this, then this would no longer be the opposite side, would it? This would be the adjacent side, and this would be the opposite. You guys know that, right? From last year, hopefully. Yeah, but this one never changes. The hypotenuse, it's always across from the right angle. It's always along the side. So let's get started on problem number one on your worksheet. Again, we're going to have plenty of time to, to work on things. So just try to stay with me as I'm explaining. So just... Just in the case that you think you understand something, but you really don't. Just follow along with everybody here. So problem one, you don't need to write this in your notes. It's on your worksheet. Just switch over to your worksheet. They're not asking for what theta equals in this problem. It doesn't matter what theta equals. They want to know what the cosine of theta equals. So you need to know the definition of cosine. Cosine is adjacent length over the hypotenuse length. So you got to check, do we have both of those? If this is where theta is, then the adjacent length is 10. The hypotenuse is 5 squared to 13, so it would be 10 over 5 squared to 13. A little bit of a problem here. We can't have a square root in the bottom of a fraction. Before we try to fix that, though, what about 10 over 5? That becomes 2 over 1, or just 2 on top, so it's 2 over the square root of 13. And then we just square the top and bottom to get rid of the square root, right? Yeah. Isn't that what you do? Sure. No? I'm just testing you guys because we just barely finished a unit on square roots. What do you do to get rid of a square root on the bottom of a fraction? You guys know this? You multiply by itself on the top and bottom. You don't square a fraction to get rid of a square root. You never have been able to do that. I was testing you. 
Mostly you pass. So it's two squares of 13 over. Thirteen. Square of thirteen times the square of thirteen is just thirteen. That one's just a pretty straightforward question. There's not much to it other than simplifying uh, the fraction there. The next one is not quite so straightforward. Let's take a look. So this is question two. It's way more fun because it involves more work. Anybody tell me the problem here? I mean, why is it any different? Other than it uses, well, I should have erased that. How do we know it's tangent? Dang it. Because it says tangent. Because it says tangent. Does it say tangent in the problem? Yes. Oh, it does. All right. Well, that was embarrassing. It does say tangent. Yeah, we don't have the opposite side. Shoot. Yeah, lucky for you guys, you've been taught probably the most famous theorem of all mathematics. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. <clears throat> That's good old Mr. Pythagoras. He was a really weird dude, by the way, Pythagoras. He had, I mean, he came up with that nice formula, but... Come up with triangles? He came up with theorems of, about triangles, but... Triangles have been around for a long time before that. No, he started to like worship numbers, like almost like a religion. It was really strange. Weird dude. But I guess pretty smart. Anyway, uh, how do we find that missing side? Is it A, B, or C that we're trying to find? A or B, actually. You guys remember this from last year, right? Pythagorean theorem? Yep. This one has to be C. The hypotenuse has to be C. The other two legs could be whatever you want. I'm going to call it A, and I'm going to call the other one B. So it's A squared plus, now I'm going to, you need to really write this like I'm writing it. If you're trying to square that expression, it's got to be in a parenthesis. So it's 7 squared to 5 squared equals 21 squared. Honestly, this isn't that hard to do. 21 squared is exactly 441. Uh oh. Are we having problems here? To the calculator. <laughs> Type it in exactly how it looks. Parentheses, 7 square roots of 5. Close the parentheses. Square the parentheses. Well, that wasn't so painful. Now, that doesn't necessarily have to be done on a calculator. If Here's really what's happening here. The reason that this is in parentheses is that both of these have to be squared. I, I, I actually want you guys to do this here. What's 7 squared? Okay. Only one of you. Come on. 45. The square root of 5 squared is 5. Now type that into your calculator. 49 times 5. You should get the same thing, right? 135, what was it? 245. Anyway, if you subtract 245 on both sides, you get A squared equals 196. Give your big giant feet to yourself. <laughs> what size are those feet anyway? Those are big giant feet. A equals Almost the same size as Mason's feet. A equals 14. So we're done, right? Have we answered the question? We, we solved something. A equals 14. We solved it, didn't we? The question was asking for the tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So what's the opposite length? Come on now. 14. 14. The adjacent length? 7 Seven squared to 5. 14 divided by 7 is 2. So it's 2 over the square root of 5. And 
Pretty much. <laughs> Multiply the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. And you get 2 square roots of 5 over 5. So why don't you guys try 3 and 4. At uh, question number 5. So, question 5, question 5. You're supposed to find a tangent of theta if you already know the cosines 15 seventeenths. It doesn't have to be done this way, but my suggestion would be to draw a right triangle. Very much like this. It could be any kind of right triangle, any size, any shape. Just so it has to be a right triangle. And then they've already told you that the cosine is 15 over 17. So if I've drawn my triangle like this and put theta down here, I've got to put the 15 and the 17 in a very specific spot. First of all, where does the 17 have to go? Remember, the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so this has to be the hypotenuse, 17. The 15 is the adjacent length. So the way I've drawn my triangle, where would that have to go? On the side here or on the bottom? On the bottom. So you could just draw a random right triangle and then label the sides accordingly. And then just find tangent. Tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent. Oh, shoot, we don't have the opposite. How do we get it? Like you've done on the other problems using Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus 15 squared is equal to 17 <coughs> squared. Fifteen squared is two hundred and twenty-five. Seventeen squared is two hundred and eighty-nine. If you subtract two hundred twenty two hundred twenty-five, you're gonna get a squared equals sixty-four. So a equals eight. Now we can figure out what the tangent is. The tangent of theta. Is what over what? Yeah, well, it's really hard to understand you guys when you all talk at once like that. It's, it's, it's hard to uh, figure out what everybody's saying. 8 over 15. Because the definition of tangent is opposite over adjacent. Well, anyway, that's pretty similar to how, well, that was cool. Perfectly drawn rectangle. Nice. I'm pretty good. I'm on fire, dude. So anyway, that's how uh, question six would look. Just draw a triangle, label it. Okay. So just to recap, if there's a side missing, how do you find it? Pythagorean theorem. You guys, you guys out there, you awake? Yeah. On those last six problems we were going on, if you didn't have a, if you didn't have a side that you needed, how did you find it? A squared plus B squared equals C. Exactly. Pythagorean theorem. Take a look at number seven now on your worksheet. Number seven. Kazoo time. It's, uh, it's asking you to. Find a missing side, right? The missing side x in between a and c. Well, shoot, we just use Pythagorean theorem, right? We use a squared. That worked on all the other problems. Why won't it work in this problem? Yeah. This is, this is still not new stuff, you guys. This is just review. You've done this before. You might have forgotten, but you can only use Pythagorean theorem if you have two sides already. And you're just trying to find a third. On this problem here, number seven, we only have one side. 
But the other nice thing is they've given us an angle. Angle A is 66 degrees. Angle C is 90. And angle C is 90. Okay. Um, here's, here's how it could be helpful. Let's use angle A since we know that angle A is 66 degrees. This length of 2, is that the adjacent, the opposite, or hypotenuse? Come on, quick! This side X, is that the adjacent, the opposite, or the hypotenuse? So which trig function does that sound like? Adjacent and a hypotenuse. Cosine. So what if we set up an equation? Cosine of 66, because we have an adjacent length of X and a hypotenuse. Yeah, theta, we just used theta because we didn't know the angle measure, but now we know, so, so we're going to call it 60. Call. Yep, yep. And the, uh, the definition of cosine is adjacent, which is x, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 2. Well, this is just an equation to solve. We're solving for x, and right now x is being divided by 2. So we multiply it by 2. Now, I hope this was explained to you well enough last year that it still makes sense. I need you guys to listen very closely so you don't make a very silly error. It, it makes sense to you guys to multiply this side by 2, right? Because x is being divided by 2. Well, this is an equation, so if you do something on one side, you got to do it to the other. And, and here's where students have sometimes a little bit of a hard time understanding. You can't multiply 66 by 2. Okay. 66 is inside the cosine function. Usually it's not written this way, but there are supposed to be parentheses here. 66 is inside of a cosine function. Let me, let me show you a similar equation. You guys tell me if this would be right. If the equation were the square root of 66, e you don't need to write this down, equals x over 2. Wouldn't you still multiply the side by 2? Right? Would you multiply the 66 by 2? What would you do? You put it on the outside. Why? 66 is inside of the square. They're not the same type of numbers. This is the square root of 66. This is just 2. It's the same argument here. 66 is inside of a cosine. You can't mess with 66. You have to multiply the 2 on the outside. So x is equal to 2 times the cosine of 66. Now before we start messing around with calculators, a lot of students uh, would really be better off thinking about the reasonableness of their answer. We don't know what x equals yet, but should x be smaller than or greater than 2? How do we know that? The hypotenuse has got to be, the, and now I know you guys know that, but every year on tests and assignments, students will mess up somewhere and then get this weird answer that they circle and they don't, they don't seem to think, well that answer doesn't even make sense. You understand what I'm saying? Our answer to this problem should be something less than 2. Because 2 is the hypotenuse. Right? All right, get your calculators on. Everybody in here needs to do this. Every single one of you. Every single one of you needs to hit the mode button. Hit the mode button. It's right next to the second button. Depends on if you're rounding to the dead nearest tenth or the nearest what? What are you rounding to? The nearest tenth. Would be a decimal. So if you had like negative three point nine. Negative three point nine. Negative three point nine. You know something that you round it up to. So then there's negative four. Negative two. Hey you. Um, you see where my mouse is pointing here? You have two modes: degree and radian. Every single one of you right now today should be in degree mode. Okay, you have to be in degree mode for these problems. If not, your answer is going to look way weird. Okay, so it's in degree mode. Now you just type in exactly what it says: two multiplied by the cosine of 66. And again, we're expecting something smaller than two, right? Point eight. Now just stop for a second. Consider the reasonableness. Are we okay with that? Point 0.8? Yeah. Sounds pretty reasonable. Okay. So that's how these problems work. If you're missing a side and you only have one other given side, you have to use trigonometry. And we didn't just choose cosine at random. We chose cosine because we had the adjacent and a hypotenuse. 
And this is how you do every single one of these, but number nine. Um, number nine's a, I don't know, it's a little different. It's the same but different. Oh, yeah, it's different. And again, hopefully you know this, we can't use Pythagorean theorem because we only have one side. First thing is to choose the correct trig function. Sine, cosine, or tangent? What's it going to be? Choose wisely. For question number nine. We have a hypotenuse right here. We have an adjacent length. That can only be the cosine. <coughs> so we're going to do cosine of 40. Now here's where it's different. What's the definition of cosine? Adjacent is 16 and the hypotenuse is x. Dang, that x is on the bottom. <coughs> Yes, yeah, so we just have to solve this a little differently than the one we did the one we just finished. Um, there are a couple of ways you could do it. I don't know how your teacher taught you last year. I can't even remember how I taught it last year. This is how, if, if this were me and how we're doing it, I, I would still want to get rid of this fraction, so I'd multiply it by x on both sides. Doesn't that get rid of the fraction? Multiplying by x dividing by x. But now we have x times the cosine of 40 is equal to 16. What are we trying to find? We're trying to find x, right? What's happening to x? Yeah, right now x is being multiplied by the cosine of 40. So the opposite of multiply is to divide. Well, that just starts with the same problem. Yeah. Oh, divide by the cosine of 40. Divide by the cosine of 40. Because we want to get x by itself. So x is equal to 16 over the cosine of 40. And you shouldn't have to check your mode every time. Once you set it to degree mode, it'll stay until you change it. So uh, 16 divided by cosine of 40. 40. Oh, I should have I should have asked you this. What are we expecting to have here? Something bigger than 16 or smaller than 16? Bigger, bigger, bigger. Bigger, because it's a hypotenuse. So hopefully, ooh, 20.9. Is that a reasonable answer? Very. Very. Would 20.8 be wrong? It says round to the nearest tenth. So technically, yes. Uh, I want you to finish that section, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Hey. No, just look at the, pre uh, the screen here. If I put a question mark right here to represent that angle, would that be that hard to figure out? The inside of a triangle is 180, right? 90 plus 40 is 130, so that means this has to be 50. That's pretty easy. Finding a missing angle in triangles sometimes is pretty easy. But um, the next section, 11, 12, 13, and 14, you're supposed to find the measure of theta in number 11. We can't do it like we just did on this problem because they only give you that the right angle is 90. That's all you have. So this one again uses trigonometry. So here's Here's number, uh, what is this one? No, this is 12. Let's do number 12. Number 12 is 12 is better. So this is problem number 12. It starts much the same way. You still have to choose a trig function that matches the information. So you have theta right here. This is the adjacent side. That's the opposite side. So, yeah. 
tangent. We're, we're going to have to use tangent on this one. Now, uh, we don't know what the angle measure is actually, so just keep it as theta. Tangent of theta is 6 over 2.3. 6 over 2.3. I know it's been a long time, since all the way since last year, since you've done a problem like this. Some of you might have forgotten, but I see a lot of weird stuff happen on this kind of a problem in particular. A lot of weird stuff. Let me, let me show you something different here. You don't need to write this down, but your brains have to be turned on here so you can understand something. If we were solving for theta and it was inside of a square root, would it make sense to, for anybody in here to divide by a square root to try to cancel? Would that make sense to anybody? Does dividing by a square root cancel a square root? What cancels a square root? Why? It's the opposite. Yeah, squaring is the opposite of square rooting, right? So what I'm getting at is we're solving for theta, correct? Many, many, many students in an attempt to get theta by itself would say, hey, let's just divide by tangent. No. You can't do that. Is tangent multiplying theta? No. Ta theta is inside the tangent function. It's not multiplying. There's no multiplying going on here. Okay? we got to figure out what the opposite of tangent is. Just like with squaring and square rooting, those are opposites. Yeah, you guys learned this last year. There is an opposite of tangent called the inverse. Does this look familiar, tangent to the negative one? Yeah. That's what gets rid of a tangent function. You can't divide by tangent to get rid of it. You have to take the inverse tangent on both sides. Inverse tangent on both sides. This would be the same type of relationship is like squaring a square root. It gets rid of it. Okay? Taking the inverse tangent of tangent, they cancel each other out. Why would we want to cancel the tangent in the first place? What are we even solving for here? Theta. We're solving for theta. Theta is inside the tangent function. We can't get theta alone unless we can get rid of tangent. What gets rid of tangent? The inverse, the inverse tangent. Okay. So theta is the only thing that's left on the left side. And over here we have the inverse tangent of 6 over 2.3. Yeah, now before you, maybe you've already done it and that's okay, but before you type anything into your calculator, let's talk about what kind of answer would even make sense here. Would it make sense to have an angle measure bigger than 90? No, it wouldn't. What about a negative angle measure? So again, I'm trying to get you guys to consider what your answers are before you move on to the next problem. So this is just a calculator thing. Type second tangent of 6 divided by 2.3. <coughs> and we get about 69 degrees. And that seems pretty reasonable. That's all you do. That's what theta equals. <laughs> Yeah. Now, I didn't look very closely at this worksheet before I printed it off, but uh, before we solve all the way, take a look at number 11. Which trig function would you use on number 11? 13 tangent. Number 11 wouldn't you use the tangent because he has opposite and adjacent? Yep. What would you use on 13? Tangent. Tangent. What would you use on 14? Tangent. It's just a coincidence. You don't always use tangent on these problems. Just I don't know. The worksheet made them all use tangent. So take a minute and try to finish that section right there. Just through 14. They are special. Special right triangles. Yeah, there's notes. I, I think this is going to be new for most of you. Is it ringing a bell to anybody? Special right triangles? Yeah? Okay. Well, we at least know the word triangle, right? Good triangle. Three sides. All right. And right triangle? 90 degrees in there. So you know half of what we're talking about. 
Here, here's the issue. Take a look at problem number uh, 17, no, 15. Take a look at problem number 15 on your worksheet. The, uh, the directions are very clear. It says find the exact value of the cosine of 30. Here, here's the problem with uh, an exact value. You can use a calculator for these problems. Um, but if you type in the cosine of 30 and hit enter, it's 8.6602540388. That's not an exact value. That's a decimal approximation. Because this decimal keeps going on forever and ever. It's an irrational number. So I wouldn't accept any kind of decimal. I wouldn't accept 0.87 or 0.9 or anything like that as an answer to this problem. There has to be an exact value. You guys see the problem? Okay, so uh, there's something called a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So draw it kind of like I've drawn it here. I didn't actually draw this very well. Let me try again. Yes. All right, I'm going to freehand this, so don't laugh. Oh, man. Ooh, awful. Uh oh So draw like that. That was pretty bad. Look at how perfect that is. I know. That was pretty awful. So the 30 degrees is the smallest angle. The 90, obviously, is the right angle. And then 60 degrees would be right there. Now here's, here's one cool thing about it. We all agree that this would be the smallest side. We all agree? Mm -hmm. Whatever the smallest side is, the hypotenuse is double. So if I put a 4 right here, the hypotenuse would always it would be 8. Okay. Or if I, put a, uh, if I put a 28 right here for the hypotenuse, what would the smaller side be? 4. Do you see how that pattern works? Mm -hmm. The other nice thing is, is the, uh, the other side over here. Um, if I put... Let's say I put a 5 for the smallest side. The hypotenuse then would be 10. This other medium-sized side would be 5 square roots of 3. It's always this number in front of a square root of 3. Always. So let's say that this were 7. Then this would be 14. 14 and this would be 7 square roots of 3. Okay. Or... Going the other way, if we know that this side is 9 square roots of 3, could you fill out the rest of it? The bottom would be 9, and this one would be 18. That's one nice thing about this triangle. It's pretty easy to fill out the sides if you don't want them. Um, but just for simplicity's sake, let's call this 1. What would the hypotenuse be? 2. And this would be... One square root of three or just square root of three. Let's just keep it simple and use these numbers. It would work with any numbers, but let's use these. Now, on this right triangle, what is the cosine of 30? Come on now. We have done problems like this today on your worksheet. What's the cosine of 30? The definition of cosine is the adjacent length divided by the hypotenuse. So the adjacent length is the square root of 3. And the hypotenuse is 2. So the cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2. Now, in case you're not convinced yet, eyes up on the screen. Take a look. Wasn't the cosine of 30.866? Well, the square root of 3 divided by 2 is also 0 0.866025. They're the exact same thing. Okay? This would be called the exact value. Square root of 3 over 2. But that means it could be any exact value for like number 15 that says the cosine of 30. But when it feels like that, it's just going to be like a 1, 2, 3. What if you use like 5? So if I used an 8 right here, what would have to go here? 16. And what would have to go here? 8 root 3. So let's do it again. What's the cosine of 30? 8 square roots of 3 over 16. But then 8 over 16 becomes 
It's always square root of 3 over 2. That's a good question, though. I'm glad you asked it. The, the, the cosine of 30 is always, always, always square root of 3 over 2. Cool. Okay. Is there something for 45? Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, so what about 18? So, so your answer on number 15 is what? What's your answer on 15? Square root of 3 over 2. Good. Now go to 18. What's the... Uh, Well, I'm going to, sorry, let's go back to the regular numbers. If we have 1 and 2, what's your question? Oh, that's a good question. We'll get to that in one second. Can you hold off on that? Let's do 18 here. Tangent is 60. Now, somebody was, uh, I think, getting pretty close. What were you saying? Yeah. The definition of tangent is the opposite length divided by the adjacent length. The opposite to 60 is the square root of 3. And the adjacent length to 60 is 1. So it's just the square root of 3. And again, if you're not quite convinced, on your calculator, if you type in the tangent of 60, you get 1.7. And then if you type in the square root of 3, you also get 1.7. They're the exact same value. But rather than using a long decimal, we use the exact square root. You follow? So what about 19 then? Yeah. If you take a look at 19. So you, you use this triangle for this? For all of them except the 45 degree ones. Because there's no 45 degree angle on here. So you can do number 19, right? 30 degrees. The sine of 30, the definition of sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 30 would be 1 half. You, you still with me on this? No, it won't do a fraction for these long, like, if you type in the tangent of 60 and then hit fraction, it won't do it. Maybe you add that much They can't. These are irrational numbers. Now, Sadler was wondering about uh, the 45 degree angles. There's another special triangle called 45-45-90. Okay. It's, it's it's a lot the same except the triangle looks different. So let, here you go. Draw this. Yeah, you can choose which 45 degree angle to use. It doesn't matter which one. Yeah, I'll show you here in a second. So for problem 16, you have to use the 45-45-90 triangle. You haven't used this word probably since last year, but I know you learned it. Isosceles. Isosceles, ringing a bell. This is an isosceles triangle. It means that this side has the same measure as that side. Isn't that what isosceles means? It also means the base angles are the same. So here's the cool thing about the 45, 45, 90 triangle. So that corner is 90. This corner right here is 90, yep. If I call this 6, what does this one have to be? 6. And then the hypotenuse is 6 squared to 2. That's the nice thing about always, square root of two. always something squared to 2. So if I put an 11 right here, then the other side would be 11. The hypotenuse would be 11 root 2. Root two. That's how these 45, 45, 90 work. So just for simplicity's sake, let's call 1, 1. That means the hypotenuse would be square root of 2. Now we can do cosine of 45. And it doesn't matter which 45 degree angle you choose. You can choose the one on the top or the one on the bottom. Just choose one and use it. It, it really doesn't matter. Exactly. They would. So for the cosine of 45, if I'm going to use this 45 degree angle right down here at the bottom, what's the definition of cosine? So the adjacent length would be 1. And the hypotenuse would be square root of 2, so it's 1 over the square root of 2. 
The adjacent length is one. Because we chose to put a one there. So I'm going to be on that One. Because that's the easiest number. You could choose anything. But well, let me show you. Yes, yes, eventually. If I uh, if I put a seven right here, what has to go here? Seven. And then what has to go here? Seven. Seven squares of two. two. So if we use these numbers, what would go on top? Seven is the adjacent length now, right? And what's the hypotenuse? Seven. But those just cancel each other out anyway, and you end up with one over the square root of two, which is what we had originally. So it, it doesn't really matter what numbers you use, but just to be more simple, it's best to just use a one because that's where you're going to end up at the end. Does that make sense? So we've got one over the square root of two, but you can't leave the square root of two on the bottom, so it's square root of two over square root of two. So final answer is the square root of two over two. And again, you can check this if you wanted to. Type in the cosine of 45, and it gives you 0 0.707. And then if you type in the square root of 2 divided by 2, you get 0 0.707. Woo! That was a lot of stuff. That seriously was like three lessons that you would have learned last year on three different days, all in one day. Dang, the time broke. Yeah, only. Yeah. Fucking pretty easy days. Yeah, take the test.